The story begins with a man named Lee, who is shown shopping for groceries in a supermarket. He buys a lot of fruits and heads straight to a ground where his son Marcus is playing a baseball match. Lee's wife, Evelyn, and his other children are also there. Lee notices his oldest friend, Ahmed, who has come with his kids to cheer for Marcus. As the game starts, Marcus looks very nervous. The ball is coming towards him so fast that he leaves it. Evelyn calmly advises her son Marcus to relax and focus on the game. Lee's friend Ahmed is listening to something on his radio because he has a habit of keeping up with live events. Everything seems normal, but then Lee notices something falling from the sky, speeding rapidly toward the ground. Everyone begins to panic at the sight, and the ground is quickly evacuated. No one knows what this mysterious object is, but everyone considers it a potential threat and tries to clear the area as soon as possible. People rush to hide in their homes. Lee tells his wife Evelyn to take the kids home. Lee heads to get his car, and his eldest daughter, Reagan, goes with him because she cares deeply for her father and doesn't want to leave him in this critical situation. In the midst of the rush, they manage to reach the car, but Lee gets out to ask a police officer what's happening. The officer is also clueless, but suddenly, a dangerous creature runs into the police car, colliding with it. These huge, terrifying creatures destroy anything in their path, killing many people. Seeing this, Lee quickly gets Reagan into the car, trying urgently to start it. Unfortunately, the car won't start, and the massive creatures are wreaking havoc wherever they go. The creatures were causing massive destruction, and Lee was completely trapped, unsure of how to save his daughter. Meanwhile, Evelyn was shown taking the kids back home, but soon the same deadly creatures appeared right in front of her, flipping cars around. Seeing this, Evelyn quickly reversed her car to avoid them. She managed to escape the attack by reversing, but soon after, her car got into an accident, rendering it undrivable and putting her and her children in great danger. The creatures were much larger than humans, with sharp claws that allowed them to kill anyone in their path. The city was in chaos, and Lee, trying to protect his daughter Reagan, went into a shop where many others had also hidden. Lee told Reagan to stay calm and urged everyone to stay quiet because one of the creatures was outside, approaching as it heard noises. As the creature entered the shop, suddenly, a lady's mobile phone rang, which made the creature go wild, attacking them. Everyone started running for their lives. Lee managed to take Reagan and escape the shop, running towards the other side. But the noise of their movement caught the creature's attention, and it began to follow them. Not far from there, Evelyn and Marcus were hiding behind a police car. When Lee brought Reagan to that spot, the creature was still chasing them. At that moment, a police officer arrived and pulled out his shotgun, firing multiple shots at the creature. However, the gun did little damage, and the creature sensed the officer's presence and pounced on him, killing him brutally. The entire scene went blank after this. After some time, we see Evelyn in an apartment with her daughter Reagan and her son Marcus. Evelyn recently had a newborn baby. At this point, Evelyn heads toward the basement. The basement was partially flooded, so Evelyn first took out a special box for her newborn baby, where the baby would remain safe. She also prepared oxygen cylinders that would help in an emergency. Evelyn brought all her children upstairs, doing everything quietly because those deadly creatures were still lurking around. Any sound would alert the creatures, and they would attack immediately. Evelyn had instructed her children to stay absolutely silent, no matter what. Reagan was missing her father, Lee, deeply, not knowing where he might be since they got separated. She kept trying to reach him by using a radio her father had left, hoping that it might somehow help them reconnect. Reagan also had a map where she marked each new finding. One day, while on the apartment rooftop, Reagan saw fire burning in the distance. She felt they needed to find out who was out there because the creature's arrival had reduced the human population to near extinction, and the remaining survivors were struggling to stay alive. She marked the spot on her map and told her mother about it, and they decided to investigate. The next day, Evelyn, Reagan, Marcus, and the baby headed into the forest, moving slowly to avoid making any noise, which could attract the creatures. They followed Evelyn's instructions carefully, and eventually, 
They reached the ruins where Reagan had seen the fire. The area was fenced off, but there was a way in, and Evelyn led her children carefully. As they proceeded, Evelyn accidentally stepped on a wire. As soon as Evelyn pulled on the wire, a loud noise erupted. Terrified, she told her children to run, knowing the sound would likely attract a deadly creature. Reagan and Marcus started running, but Marcus suddenly stepped into a dangerous trap, causing him unbearable pain. He couldn't hold back his scream, but Evelyn quickly covered his mouth to silence him, as creatures were sure to be approaching. With immense care, Evelyn managed to free Marcus's foot from the trap, but the noise had already attracted a creature, which was now advancing to attack them. Determined to protect her children, Evelyn pulled out her shotgun and, aiming directly at the creature's head, fired with full force, killing it instantly. This incident taught Evelyn how to kill these creatures, but she knew they couldn't handle more if a large group arrived. Evelyn didn't know who had set these traps, but her priority was her children's safety. She decided to lead Reagan, Marcus, and the baby away from the area. However, the danger increased as the gunshot sound attracted more creatures to the spot. Avoiding open spaces, Evelyn led her children into the ruins. Suddenly, a stranger appeared and grabbed Evelyn, covering her mouth and pulling her aside. He was aware that the creatures were tracking their sounds, so he guided Evelyn and her children to a basement area and led them into a large metal bunker. This bunker was safe from the creatures, but could only be locked for a short time due to limited oxygen levels. It was, however, a perfect hiding spot to avoid detection. After waiting quietly in the bunker for a while, the stranger stepped out to check, confirming that the creatures had left. Evelyn carefully emerged from the bunker with her children, but the stranger told them to leave the area permanently. His reason was simple. He had limited resources and didn't want to share them with anyone. But Evelyn, showing him her youngest baby, pleaded for help, explaining that her children needed his support, something only he could offer. For some reason, Evelyn found his voice familiar, and upon listening closely, she realized that this man was Emmett, her husband's old friend, who looked completely different due to the hardships he had endured. Emmett explained how dire things had become, with the creatures killing humans as if they wanted to eliminate the species, aiming to dominate the earth. Seeing Evelyn and her children in such a desperate state, Emmett allowed them to stay, though he warned they'd need to use resources very carefully. Marcus, who had been injured, needed treatment. So Emmett gave Evelyn some medicine to help him heal. Evelyn took Marcus into the bunker, knowing that the medicine would cause him intense pain. She closed the door to muffle his screams, which would have attracted the creatures outside. Evelyn began treating Marcus, who screamed in pain and eventually fainted, but his wound started to heal. To distract him from the pain, Evelyn handed him headphones and connected them to a radio, letting him listen to music. After a while, Marcus picked up a strange signal, a song playing on an unusual frequency. When he shared it with his mother, Evelyn was shocked and believed the song might hold a hidden message. Emmett explained that this song had been playing on the same signal for four months. He had tried to investigate its meaning but never succeeded. Emmett believed that, apart from them, no other humans might have survived, as the deadly creatures had likely wiped everyone else out. Though Evelyn held on to hope that her father and husband might still be alive, Emmett bluntly told her not to cling to any false hopes, reminding her that this was harsh reality, not an imaginary movie. Hearing Emmett's words, Evelyn began to accept that her husband and father were likely gone. As night fell, they all decided to rest in the bunker, with Emmett firmly warning everyone to stay inside, as venturing out could be extremely dangerous and might put everyone at risk. Later, while everyone was asleep, Reagan quietly woke her brother Marcus. Marcus was startled at first, fearing a creature had come, but soon realized it was just Reagan. They communicated in whispers and Reagan shared a surprising revelation. She believed the song on the radio signal wasn't random but rather a coded message, possibly sent by someone alive. She thought if they could find the broadcasting area, they might be able to amplify the signal and perhaps even find their father. Reagan wanted to go to this location, but Marcus, still in pain from his injured leg, refused and decided to go back to sleep. Undeterred, 
Reagan took matters into her own hands. At dawn, without telling anyone, she gathered her belongings and set off alone, determined to reach the broadcasting station where the signal originated. When Evelyn discovered that Reagan had left, she was devastated and broke down in tears, panicking over her daughter's safety. Desperate, Evelyn pleaded with Emmett to help save Reagan, explaining that she was too vulnerable to survive on her own. Emmett hesitated, torn about whether he should leave the safety of the bunker, but ultimately decided he couldn't leave Reagan out there. Meanwhile, Reagan moved carefully through the forest, making her way toward the broadcast location. She eventually came upon an abandoned train, a grim reminder of how the world had changed. The journey was fraught with danger, but she pressed on, hopeful that following the signal would lead to safety, or maybe even to others who could help. And those dangerous aliens had completely destroyed the train. Reagan now entered the train, looking for some supplies. Inside, there were many human dead bodies in a very bad state. As she searched around a bit, she found a first aid box. But as she reached for it, a dead body fell on her, scaring her so much that she screamed loudly. Reagan knew that if she made a noise, the creatures would definitely come. And that's exactly what happened. A very dangerous creature arrived, slowly moving toward her. But Reagan still had her hearing device and the radio with her, which she used to create a strange, disturbing sound. The signal from these devices bothered the creature immensely. Seeing the opportunity, Reagan quickly pulled out her gun and shot at the creature's head. But her aim wasn't perfect, so the creature was only wounded, not killed. Now the creature knew exactly where Reagan was and advanced toward her to kill her. Reagan struggled to reload her gun and felt it might be her last moment. But just in time, Emmett arrived, taking down the creature from behind and saving Reagan. Emmett quickly got her out of there, moving to another location as the gunshot noise would attract more creatures to that spot. Once they reached a safe place, Emmett told Reagan that he had seen a boat not far from there, and after resting a bit, they would make their way there. Meanwhile, Evelyn was shown putting her baby to sleep, but the troubling thing was that the oxygen tank was almost empty. She began to worry, without oxygen, how would they survive? She knew she had to do something. Elsewhere, Reagan, who had been resting, woke up. But when she looked for her hearing device and radio, they were missing. Emmett was nowhere to be seen either. Worried, Reagan went outside to check, but there was no trace of Emmett. Reagan began to think that Emmett might have run away, taking her hearing device and radio with him. But that didn't happen. Emmett came back, holding Reagan's radio and hearing device, and gave them to her. He said they needed to leave quickly because he had seen many creatures roaming around. It would be best for them to keep moving. Meanwhile, we see Evelyn, who had come out of the bunker, with her son Marcus following closely behind. Evelyn explained to Marcus that he needed to protect the baby while she searched for an oxygen tank. She assured him that she would find one and save them all. Although Marcus was very scared, he knew he had to take responsibility. So he went back into the bunker while Evelyn made her way into the forest. As she walked, Evelyn reached the spot where her husband Lee had died. She had known for a while that he was gone, but she had been holding on to false hope. She realized she had to accept the reality. Meanwhile, Reagan and Emmett had reached a number of boats and were trying to get to the other side. We then see Marcus, who was tasked with protecting the baby. He placed the baby inside the bunker and went outside to look for supplies. Evelyn had now arrived at a supermarket, where she picked up some oxygen tanks and medications. After gathering her supplies, she started to make her way back to the bunker, doing everything cautiously. Reagan and Emmett had found a boat, and Emmett was carefully untying its rope. Suddenly, a little girl ran up to Emmett. He was confused about how she was still alive and approached her to check. But the girl quickly tied a rope around Emmett's neck, which had many bottles attached, causing noise to ensue. Before he knew it, some tribal people appeared, who were members of the girls' group. They took Reagan's radio and hearing device, but it was unclear what this group would do to them. Meanwhile, Marcus, who was outside the bunker looking for supplies, suddenly came across a dead body, which frightened him greatly, and he accidentally falls down, making a noise. Marcus, terrified, 
runs back to the bunker because the noise has attracted a creature that starts to pursue him. He quickly puts the baby's box inside a container and shuts the door. But the scariest part is that the container door locks itself automatically, meaning that until someone opens it from the outside, Marcus and the baby cannot get out. This situation is very dangerous because they have no oxygen left. The creature has now entered the bunker and starts destroying everything, causing noise that spreads far and wide. But soon, Evelyn arrives at the scene and confirms that a dangerous creature has indeed entered their bunker. Marcus and the baby are in grave danger, and without oxygen, they cannot survive. In a desperate move, Evelyn risks her life and fires a shot to draw the creature's attention. The creature heads straight outside towards her. However, Evelyn had a plan in place. She places one of her two oxygen tanks beneath the creature and fires at it. There's a massive explosion, completely incinerating the alien, but it's not dead yet. Seizing the opportunity, Evelyn rushes back inside the bunker and locks the door securely. She quickly goes to rescue her son and husband. Despite everything, Marcus is still barely alive, managing to breathe. Evelyn gets them both out and provides them with oxygen. Meanwhile, we see Reagan and Emmett, who have been captured by the tribe. They are being taken somewhere unknown. Suddenly, Emmett signals Reagan to jump into the water. Reagan does just that, pushing one of the men into the water as she jumps in. Emmett takes the opportunity to kill one of the tribe members, whose loud screams draw the attention of a dangerous creature. The creature arrives and starts attacking many tribe members, causing chaos as they all flee in fear. Emmett also jumps into the water to save himself. But the creature was still pursuing them and moving closer to kill them. Fortunately, Reagan had managed to grab a boat and brought Emmett inside it. They both escaped from the creature and started rowing towards a large island. When Reagan and Emmett reached the island, they were shocked to find a small village with many people living there. It seemed like a completely safe place. They quickly made their way into the village, where they met a man named Smith, who was guiding everyone and showing them around. Smith informed Emmett that when the aliens attacked, they had made their way to this island through the water, where there were no aliens at all. He granted Emmett and Reagan permission to stay there, but Emmett felt uneasy for some reason and began to think of his daughter. When Emmett went near the water, he noticed some movement inside his boat, revealing that a creature had gotten stuck in it and had also arrived on this island. Emmett became very frightened and rushed back to the villagers, urging them to go inside their homes because the aliens were coming. However, it was probably too late. Many creatures began to attack the villagers, killing them one by one. Emmett quickly saved a child and took Reagan directly to the sea. Smith had locked his children in a cupboard and told them not to make any noise. Then, Smith got into a vehicle with Reagan and Emmett and honked the horn as they drove away, hoping the noise would attract the creature and lead it away from the village. The creature relentlessly pursued them and damaged their car. Fortunately, they managed to get into a nearby radio station without making much noise. However, Smith wanted to save his children, and suddenly a creature appeared behind him, grabbing him and taking him away. Smith died there, while Emmett and Reagan remained hidden inside the radio station without making a sound, because the creature was wandering inside, listening for any noise. Meanwhile, we see Evelyn outside once again taking a first aid kit. Little did she know that the creature had not left yet. It began to slowly approach her at the slightest sound. Evelyn hurriedly entered a container, but her bad luck was that the container door didn't close properly, allowing the alien to start reaching in to grab them. Both Evelyn and Marcus were screaming desperately to scare the creature away. Inside the radio station, Emmett sent Reagan into an office where the signals were controlled. However, a sudden noise attracted the creature, and it attacked Emmett, injuring him. At that moment, Reagan took her air machine out of her ear and started playing a radio, creating strange sounds that distressed the creature. Reagan knew that this type of frequency could weaken these creatures, so she moved into the radio station to spread the sound further. The alien that had entered the container had inflicted a serious injury on Evelyn's leg, and it seemed ready to kill them all. But Reagan began broadcasting the disturbing sound, even going on air, causing all the creatures to start dying from the noise. 
Marcus also turned on the sound on his radio, which caused the creature in front of them to writhe in agony. Seizing the opportunity, Marcus shot the creature, while Reagan stabbed it with an iron rod, killing it. Gradually, the sound spread throughout the entire city, weakening and killing any creature that heard it. And with this dangerous ending, the story concluded here.